high-end digital imaging requires two things, understanding the camera's dynamic range and mastering exposure metering to make full use of it. In this in-depth masterclass, I will share all the necessary theoretical knowledge and how to apply it in practice to get unparalleled results with the OM system OM1. My name is Thomas Eisel. I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria. Landscape, architecture, studio, you name it. No matter which genre of photography you are practicing, the OM-1 will take spectacular images, especially if you utilize the camera's full dynamic range. Let's get started. Although often overlooked, the file format has significant impact on the available dynamic range in post-processing. The OM-1 has two different file formats to offer for stills. 8-bit JPEG compressed with 256 tonal values per channel and 12-bit raw lossless compressed with 4096 tonal values per channel. So you can clearly see that only when shooting RAW, the full range of tonal values captured by the sensor can be recorded. To illustrate how substantial the difference actually is, look at this. The length of this strip below represents 4096 tonal values, so all the tonal values the RAW file is able to capture. The strip above represents 256 tonal values evenly distributed. Everything red indicates the lack of intermediary tonal values. The gaps are actually so big that the strip appears to be almost solid red. This is how substantial the difference is between JPEG and RAW. So always shoot RAW if you want to capture the full dynamic range. The OM system OM1 achieves the widest dynamic range at ISO 200. Every other sensitivity setting will reduce the dynamic range of the resulting image file. So from now on, I'll be talking only about ISO 200. At this setting, everything from minus 3 EV to plus 3 EV is captured with high fidelity. In this range, the color reproduction and noise levels are excellent. My recommendation is to always keep the main subject in this range. But let's examine what happens outside this range. Looking at the shadows from minus 3.3 to minus 4 EV, noise and color shifts are quite visible. Brightening these zones to recover texture or image detail in post-processing will go hand in hand with a reduction of fidelity. Everything below minus 4 EV is mostly image noise and color shifts. So when parts of the image fall in this tonal range, I recommend clipping them deliberately by setting the black point in post-processing. Looking at the other side in the highlights from plus 3.3 to plus 4 EV, a loss of texture and limited color reproduction is to be expected. Although these areas might be somewhat salvageable in post-production, the loss of fidelity is significant. Everything above plus 4 EV suffers from heavy clipping, so expect these areas to be completely white without any texture or color information. Avoid this at all costs. So down below you see the full practical photographic dynamic range of the OM system OM1. Correct exposure metering means fitting the relevant tonal values of the scene into the available dynamic range of the OM-1. I will demonstrate this with a test scene. While digital ESP metering works great, it does not give us a lot of control over the actual exposure metering process. The good news is that the OM-1 has three relevant high precision metering modes. Let's take a look. So here is ESP metering, we won't be using that. And then there is spot metering. As you can see, spot metering covers this little circle portion of the image. This is about 2% of the frame. It meters for 18% middle gray. 
and this is perfect for getting precise exposure meter readings of different parts of the image. The second relevant mode is spot highlight. It biases the spot meter to plus 2.3 EV, which is 0.7 EV lower than the actual upper limit of the high fidelity dynamic range of the OM1. The third precision metering mode is spot shadow, which biases the spot meter to minus 3 EV. This coincides with the lower limit of the high fidelity dynamic range of the OM1. All three of these modes can and should be linked to the active AF point. And here is how. Let's go to the menu, one, then go to five metering and go down there to spot metering. There, spot, spot highlight, spot shadow should all have a tick, which means that they are linked to the active AF point. Let's go back to live view. Also, keep in mind that the OM1 will not show meter readings exceeding plus minus 3 EV. By using spot highlight or spot shadow, meter readings ranging from minus 6 EV to plus 5.3 EV can be taken. With this knowledge at hand, we should now examine our scene and determine which parts of the image should be in our high fidelity range. Let's assume that this is a product photography scenario and we want all the values of the scene to be reproduced with the highest quality possible. Blown out highlights are always a nightmare because you cannot recover them in post-production. So we're gonna start by taking a reading of the highlight area in this image and this is obviously around here, the white book. Let's switch to spot meter by the way, the OM1 is currently in manual mode, so when I move the spot meter around, the exposure does not change. So here is our AF target and let's position it around here. We know that the OM1's high fidelity dynamic range goes up to plus three EV. So we're gonna change the exposure. Let's bring up those highlights to around plus 2.7 EV. I'm not going to go to plus 3 EV as this part right here might be even a bit brighter and also the spot meter is placed around here so it's gonna take a reading of the brighter part of the book and also of this a little bit darker part of the book. So in order to not blow anything out plus 2.7 EV is fine for this scene. Now that we've set our highlights, we can move the AF point around in the frame and check where the other parts of the image actually fall. Let's do this and start with the shadow area. Right around here, it seems to be quite dark. So let's get the reading. All right, and the spot meter tells us that this area is around minus 2 EV and that's perfect because we know that the high fidelity limit in the shadows is minus 3 EV. So there is still one stop of headroom. Just for the sake of it, I'm gonna move the AF target and spot meter to the gray card in the background. Let's take a look. The gray card comes in at plus 0.7 EV. So actually it's overexposed a bit, but that's not a big deal because we can just bring it down in post-production. We have now picked the best exposure settings for this particular scene. We are gonna make use of the whole dynamic range of the OM1 and we won't be clipping highlights or shadows, so we can take the shot. Right, in playback, we can still examine the histograms just for the sake of it, Keep in mind that those are JPEG histograms and do not represent the dynamic range of the 12-bit RAW file of the OM1. In any case, even though we have overexposed this part of the image by plus 2.7, we do not have any clipping areas even in the JPEG preview. Post-processing, the resulting RAW file will be a breeze. High-res shot does not only increase the image resolution drastically, 
but also improves the high fidelity dynamic range of the resulting file by 0.7 EV in the shadows. However, due to the in-camera composition of the images, the resulting file has significantly less headroom in the highlights. Be extra careful and do not surpass the plus 3 EV high fidelity limit when using high res shot or otherwise you risk clipping the highlights. Keep in mind that your best option to increase dynamic range with the OM1 is using the HDR mode and not the high resolution mode. Thanks to the sensor and image processing, the OM1 will deliver convincing results even without paying too much attention to the available dynamic range. Be that as it may, by being cognizant of the camera's dynamic range, you can really push the image quality to a new level. I've compiled all the information in a handy printable cheat sheet, which you can download via a link in the description free of charge. You can bring this cheat sheet whenever you are shooting with the OM-1, so you can always make sure that you are not clipping highlights or losing shadow detail. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and following me on other social media. See you next time.